Good afternoon, everyone. We will uh, begin the hearing for case uh, 13541, Mirta Canelo and family against Argentina. I'm Julissa Martina Falcón, the rapporteur for Argentina. I am here joined by Commissioner Flavia Piavesan, Piavesan second vice president of the Inter-American Commissioner, Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, rapporteur for people, the persons deprived of their freedom, and Commissioner Arosem Eno, the rapporteur for the rights of children. I would like to greet the representatives of the state and the representatives of the petitioners. And now I would like to give the floor to um, Executive Secretary uh, Marisol Blanchard. Thank you, Madam President. This case is related to the um, alleged abuse, lack of medical care, and death of Mirta Canelo. On February 24th, the commission adopted the admissibility report where it declared admissible the rights established in articles 4, 5, 7, 8, 11, 19, 24, and 25 of the American Convention in compliance with its Article 1.1, Article 7 of the Convention Belendo Para, and Articles 1, 6, 8 of the Inter-American Convention to prevent and sanction torture. This hearing, summoned by the Inter-American Commission, aims at the parties to present their um, additional claims and maybe to uh, decide on reparation measures. Thank you. Now, before starting, I would just like to remind you that the hearing is being broadcasted. We have subtitles. We also have a timer that will be helping us with the time. Um, should we have a problem with the timer, they will let us know. Please let us be careful with uh, the management of time. So let's begin with the parties. First of all, we will listen to the petitioner for 25 minutes, then the uh, state for another 25 minutes, then we will um, listen to the replies of the state and the petitioner. And finally, we will give the floor to the Inter-American Commission for any questions and replies from, from both parties. So let's begin with uh, the petitioner for 25 minutes, please introduce yourselves. Good afternoon, and dear commissioners and the state of Argentina. Thank you so much for allowing us to speak at this hearing in your period of sessions. My name is Marta Mirabel de Cicero. I'm joined by Hugo Norberto Corral. Ms. Torres Santomé, Mr. Carlos Carín Sasueta Vargas, and the family members of Mirta Elizabeth Canelo Castaño, her sister, and her daughter, Jessica Canelo Ruiz. We will now present what we have been requesting from the Argentine state since 2006 with regards to case 13541. And we continue to wait for a proposal for a friendly settlement. Throughout this time, different stakeholders have said that deaths in, uh, in prison are also the responsibility of the state. Dying, murdered by suicide is more, five, five times more frequent in jail than outside of it. Out of 10 deaths, nine of them are doubtful. This was said by um, Mr. Muñola from Argentina. What are we trying to say here? That our, in our report, we presented the conditions of detention, the lack of care, the harassment and discrimination, personal search, lack of medical care, specialized treatment, violence that um, abused the human dignity of Isabel Mirta Castaño and the lack of a research process in accordance to the dimension of the facts by the state, which is responsible for the personal security of the victim who was under the custody of the state. And also this state is responsible for the death of Mita Elizabeth Canelo Castaño. She was born, Elizabeth was born on August 21st, 1974. Since 2000, she had been deprived of her liberty. 
in the province of Buenos Aires at a penitentiary in Los Hornos in the province of Buenos Aires at the disposal of court number seven in the province of Buenos Aires for murder. Her conviction was reduced to 12 years of prison and she had, um, she was, she was to be out on temporal leave for good behavior one month before her death. She was isolated for a, a, in, in the case of a hunger strike and she was isolated because she did not follow an order. She was locked down in cell number five, which was 2.4 meters by 220, but her real physical space only to move was of only 1.79 by 1.23. Right now, that is where masculine trans people are isolated. Unit eight is saturated and people are requesting to be moved. So far, no one takes into account resolution 120 of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. Elizabeth was separated from the rest of the inmates in a critical psychological state. And during the night, she was found dead, inexplicably. So far, no one has been able to clarify how her death occurred. As a civil organization made up of some people who have been incarcerated and have suffered from institutional violence, we want to shed light on this case because taking into account our empirical knowledge of prisons, we know that we are in the case of a violent death in, democr in democracy. We reject the cause as of, of death as suicide because it was a suspicious death. What does this mean? This is a case where a person who was under psychological treatment before going to prison did not receive assistance. There was no program to treat her psychologically and psychiatrically. And that led to her unexplained death. Of course, there are other, there's other, there are other pieces of evidence here. There are still no specialized DA's office for these cases in the province of Buenos Aires, nor are there uh, incarceration policies with gender perspectives. So we're talking about institutional violence for the lack of application of international standards. There continues to be a systematic program as in the case of the um, Argentine dictatorship. And all these crimes were perpetrated by state officials and they have disrespected the right to memory, truth and justice the, of their families and the victim. And why are we saying this? Because Argentina is a subject to the um, Convention for Human Rights and our constitution does not control this. All of these jails are in charge of the state. And many a time these facts or these events are left unsolved. There are still no public policies to protect and accompany the victims, their families, and even the organizations that monitor the reality of these jails. There should be no delay in the answer of an official re response. And this is reflected in the lack of accessibility to the documentation to present this case at the Inter-American Commission and others. And unfortunately, the victims and their families are still waiting for an answer from public officials and from the justice system who should be protected them. Taking into account the evidence that we presented, we say, it is still uncertain what happened the day Elizabeth died, which leads us to say, understand that there was an there was a negative intent by the public officials in charge of her, who this who neglected her psychological state. Also, there's no time of death. There's a difference be, 
because the death certificate says 2030, but the statements from the witnesses says it say it was at 21 at 2130, 2135. So this shows some resistance to incriminate their colleagues in the security forces. There are, there's, there are contradictory testimonies as to when they found her body. A woman said she entered the cell and then notified to her boss, Arriola, another detainee who was in the same sector said that the staff came in and then run towards the entrance and the women said find a doctor yelling and then the person in charge of the control got there until the doctors arrived about 30 or 40 minutes went by this is taken from the official file the medication given to elizabeth that that day came out as negative but the doctor and the nurse said that they gave her clonazepam, clopamazine, and alloperidol. The um, institutional violence that took place after the death also occurred. According to a doctor, the inmates started to hit the walls. That is why a security force intervened. Another inmate said that day, we were all on a hunger strike. The worst thing in this case is that the piece of evidence that brings us to this presentation is the DNA test that uh, came up positive with regards to the uh, semen that was present in her underwear. And the DA said, with regards to the semen, we, we should say that the victim was allowed to exit and she had exited 48 hours before her death. The state suppressed all kinds of hypotheses of uh, crime, of raping, followed by death. So here we see a system and patriarchal, misogynistic justice, and it all acted against Elizabeth and her family. She was also discriminated against for her sexual orientation. One of the um, guards said that uh, Elizabeth was sad that day because she had fought with another inmate. Her rights with regards to her sexual violation were violated as well because Elizabeth is not here to defend herself. They also violated her rights as a woman and a victim because the state did not recognize human dignity in its abusive treatment against Elizabeth and Canelo Castillo. The state kept silent and neglected her and that led to her death. Now the evidence with regards to her family, another form of institutional violence was the way she, her daughter, Jessica, was treated, as well as her sister, Carla, because they were unable to speak because of fear of retaliation. At that moment, Jessica, who is here today, was only 12 years old, and she was forced to take off her underwear. They were unaware of what was going on. It was a violation of their human rights, the rights of a child and the rights of the woman. I will now give the floor to Carlos Sarza. Thank you very much. I would like to greet the commission and the representatives of the Argentine state. We would like to add some of the violations of international law um, because, well, we're talking about a case of a violation of the right to life. This person was under the care of penitentiary authorities in an isolation cell who was found with clear signs of sexual violence. The version of the investigators of the state was that it was a suicide, but it, that has nothing to do with the evidence found. And of course, the investigation did not follow the standards of a death for 
uh, suspicious death and there haven't been any results for the past 15 days. We believe that this death internationally can be attributed to the Argentine state. This is also a case of violation to personal integrity, both for the uh, incarceration conditions, because they uh, were against the international standards, the Mandela rules and the Bangkok rules, because they caused suffering to the victim. There was a lack of medical care, including their mental health, which also increased the suffering of the victim. It aggravated her situation and violated her right to integrity and health. And finally, we also believe it is clear we're talking about torture because if the victim suffered sexual violence by authorities of the state who had her under their custody and who were possibly guards or any other authority or person there with her when she suffered the uh, sexual violence before her suspicious death, that suffering is so serious that it equals torture under international law. There's an additional violation, a series of violations to articles eight and 25 of the convention. First, because of the lack of, in, of adequate investigation the investigation did not follow the international standards. It did not follow the Minnesota uh, protocol. The state did not follow up on the logical lines of research and investigation, especially it discarded the evidence about the sexual attack with an argument that does not seem plausible considering the uh, evidence on the file. And it discarded the hypothesis of a violent death and generated a hypothesis that was clearly defensive with no real justification of an alleged suicide. There are many problems, as we have said in other written reports, there are many problems with regards to the management of the physical evidence, with the testing, of the evidence and also the state did not analyze the context in which the crime occurred we're talking about the repression of those deprived of their liberty and other similar cases that took place before and after this fact there's a clear hindering in access in the access to justice of the family members. The state has refused to recognize their rights. They did not allow them to uh, be part of the investigation. They even uh, refused to give them a free copy of the file. And there's an unjustified delay because of the uh, complexity of the case and the behavior of the authorities and the activity of the indirect victims, the family who have always been willing to uh, help in the investigation, make it unreasonable for the fact that 15 years have gone by without an answer from the authorities. We believe that the investigation process is not meant to find the truth and to bring the uh, parties who are at fault to justice and to a fair trial. We believe the state is trying to minimize the responsibility of the state and so that there will no, not be uh, truth and justice. We believe that the right to the personal identity of the family members was violated as well as the rights of uh, children because of the cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment suffered by the family members when they visited Elizabeth in prison, as we've already mentioned, which include um, forcing them to be naked, including forcing a child to be naked. And this has led to the, the, the lack of truth and justice has been terrible for the family the state has refused to uh, provide reparations. There's a case, as the state will probably show, there's a case of a civil rep of civil reparations um, fostered by the former partner of the victim who did not receive a um, sentence for, for a ruling for a, a long time and uh, received it a little after this 
um, hearing was announced. And this is not enough. It does not cover all the victims and it does not cover all the measures that are necessary, including the measures of criminal investigation and sanction. And the lack of non-repetition warranty contributes to the suffering of the victims because they have been trying for many years to find justice, which in this case would mean to know what happened to Elizabeth and those responsible for her death um, need to be brought to a fair trial. And this is why we would like to give the last few minutes in our intervention so that the family members of Elizabeth can address the, com the commission. Thank you. Good afternoon. We can hear you. I want to ask for justice for my sister. I want to know what happened to her. She could be a grandmother, but she's not here. And it's not fair. It's very unfair. We just want justice to know what happened so that no one else suffers this. It's awful. It was terrible for us. Everything we have been through. In order to conclude, we believe in the international system. We believe we need to update the internal system regarding human rights. We will not allow these deaths to be silenced by a corrupt system that wants to deny the facts that happened in Argentina, nor the region. Relatives, victims are waiting for an answer. As empirical subjects, we need peace to heal the pain we are suffering in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies. That's why we want to receive apologies and to be accountable for what happened. The state has not recognized the dignity, the policies that were applied that affected Elizabeth's life and deaths. We want in this hearing to have a reply to the request of a friendly settlement because that this government in which there are human rights persons who have worked together together with us, that have hurt us for years. They have heard our grief. We presented our complaints of violence and deaths inside the prison. Thank you for your words, for your testimonies. I'm going to give the floor to the state for 25 minutes. Thank you, Madam President, Vice President. Good afternoon. I want to thank this honorable commission to participate, to invite us to participate in the hearing and also the representatives of the petitioner for the uh, presentation that they have made, which moved us. I would like to present the delegation from the state there are um, representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in charge of Human uh, Rights Affairs, Dr. 
Andrea Vidiona Pachak, Secretary of Protection and International Liaison, Human Rights, uh, Secretary, Secretariat of Human Rights, also uh, Director of Legal Affairs of the Secretariat, Dr. Albano from the Legal Section of the Human Rights Secretariat, and Portal Delegation from the Province of Buenos Aires, led by Lisandro Carlos Pellegrini, Subsecretary of Criminal Policies of the Ministry of Justice, Jorge Gervasio González Hueso, Secretary of Penitentiary uh, Policies, Director uh, Against uh, Institutional Policies, the Chief of the Penitentiary System of the Province, Dr. Lin Gauss, Legal Advisor of the Secretariat the of uh, Legal Affairs of the Secretariat of the Nation and Legal Advisor of Human Rights Affairs of the Province of Buenos Aires. I will now give the floor to Dr. Dora Ochoa, thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, the representatives of the petitioner. My name is Andrea Pochak. I'm going to start the presentation defining the stance of the state regarding this case. Afterwards, my colleagues of the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights of the Province of Buenos Aires will make reference to the initiatives and policies fostered by the provincial government related to the facts of the case regarding the work agenda that could be promoted to answer to this uh, request. First of all, I want to highlight and thank the invitation to this hearing on behalf of the uh, to the Commission to reflect on the duty to protect for persons deprived of liberty following the jurisprudence of the inter-American inter system. The hearing is an opportunity to highlight the struggle of the victim's family, of her daughter, her sister, her father, and also the work carried out by Marta Mirabete, who for years, fought for this case and brought it to this point to be considered by the Commission, making it visible. Thirdly, and regarding the case, I'm going to talk about the death of Mirta Elizabeth. She was 31 years old when she was found dead in an isolated uh, cell in 2006. Um, with a blanket. She was deprived of her liberty since 2002. See, although the sentence was not uh, ratified by the court, the Argentine state wants to take the opportunity to let you know that it will foster a friendly settlement agreement that includes international responsibility before this case. In order to carry out this proposal, I take into account the willingness expressed by the petitioners to uh, progress in order to achieve this settlement and the decision by the court of La Plata, Judge Gladys Cardone in September 2019, condemning the state of the province of Buenos Aires to compensate uh, the daughter and former partner of um, Miss Canelo Castaño. The court has been um, confirmed by the state and there is an asset compensation for the daughter that has already been paid by the province that exceeds the re economic request made by the petitioners before the commission. The decision is based on the deficit of accessibility regarding mental health access that the penitentiary system in the province offers to Mrs. Canelo Castaño. The judge Assess that on the day the victim died, she did not receive the treatment that uh, she required. In spite of the antecedents and the desperate ask for 
request of help and her constant suffering. Judge Cardoni also determined that the fact that she was isolated in a cell was unjustified and that punishment was an inhuman, cruel treatment to her. On the other hand, the state also bears in mind that the criminal domestic investigation did not take into account the individual responsibilities regarding the violation to of the right to prevent the death of Mrs. Canelo Castanello and that the investigations carried out within the penitentiary system were not followed. This coherent and committed stance that we are presented before the commission, unlike the petitioners, we want to say that to the criterion of the state, the criminal investigation provided a convincing explanation regarding the immediate cause of death and did not deviate the direct um, participation of uh, third parties in her death in accordance with the inter-American system. This was based on the autopsy and the different experts report that were added to the case, some of which were uh, carried out as requested by the petitioners. The evidence shown that the victim died as a consequence of asphyxia that is com compatible with the uh, lesions that were explained and there were no other uh, evidence. There was no other um, elements um, found on her clothes or under her nails. Everything that was found was compatible with the uh, the different uh, lesions that she suffered on her neck and different measures and, te and technical elements were used to prove this. The DA disregarded sexual violence against the victim because of the autopsy, not even in the external genitalia or the were found lesions in those areas or there were no biological tissues under her nails. Miss Canelo Castaño had left for the prison 48 hours before the fact for a day parole. So the state does not have sufficient elements to confirm that in this respect, the criminal proceeding did not fulfill uh, international standards of due diligence or um, in the, or did not investigate the uh, possibility of sexual violence. The state understands respectfully that the commission does not have information to support ill treatment, torture and persecution prior to the death of the victim affecting the victim or her daughter. In the execution of the decision where all or everything is uh, detailed, there are only presentations made by the victim or representative only about the restrictions to visit her mother. Those requests were granted. The registry and the medical history of the victim do not point to any of that evidence, whether it is physical violence, there are only two episodes of uh, self-infliction, nor from the psychologist that provided attention to her during her imprisonment. Taking into account the analysis of the case on behalf of, of the Argentine state, we want to tell the commission its willingness to open a friendly settlement process where the um, parties can work in a short term for non-repetition measures in order to guarantee the quality um, 
of health and medical attention, mental health attention in prisons in order to prevent suicides, eradicate sanctions of isolation for persons suffering from mental illnesses in the penitentiary system of the province and measures in order to monitor deaths in the context of imprisonment in the province of Buenos Aires. I will now give the floor to the representative of the province of Buenos Aires to explain lines of work in connection with the topics that I have just mentioned that could be strengthened through the friendly settlement agreement that we are proposing. Lisandro Pellegrini uh, has the floor now. Good afternoon, commissioners, especially the relatives of Elizabeth, with your authorization, we will now, as members of the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights of the province of Buenos Aires, together with the director of, for the prevention of institutional violence of the Secretariat, Dr. Javier Arecio, of the penitentiary system of the province, we will explain the measures that have been recently implemented to repair and also avoid the repetition of these uh, events. Good afternoon, commissioners. With your authorization, I will now make a brief presentation in connection with the measures that the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights of the province of Buenos Aires has implemented recently in order to uh, provide reparation and run repetition for the events that were uh, part of this case. I'm the um, in charge of the penitentiary system of the province of Buenos Aires. In the subsecretariat of penitentiary policies and through the penitentiary system, we worked on a prevention of suicide protocol. Prevention of suicide is something of great concern and requires uh, to be addressed accordingly. That's why the penitentiary system in 2020, for the first time, designed through an interdisciplinary work, a protocol to um, follow up suicidal tendencies within the penitentiary system of the province. After the presentation of that protocol was presented uh, in doing an event called Take a Minute Safe Alive during the uh, International Day for the Prevention of Suicide in September. It was widely um, widespread by the press and it appeared in different media outlets, for example, in newspaper Info by Pagina 12, Info Cielo, and different social media. Through the protocol, we try to reduce the magnitude of the suicidal tendencies within the um, inmates in all, uh, through a comprehensive approach. It is an interdisciplinary policy. The institution through penitentiary health took over the task of planning in order for inmates to receive psychological attention necessary in a timely way in order to develop a treatment and follow up this treatment uh, complying with current protocols. The identification of suicide tendencies is indispensable and encompasses a series of activities that has to do with the treatment of health uh, factors and also control uh, risk factors in general. Following this line, we analyzed indicators such as the um, uh, places where inmates are um, confined, especially areas of admission and shared areas, and also the motives for which a person uh, deprived of liberty can take his life. Also, we carried out different training um, 
activities so that the penitentiary officers and the inmates can have training elements in order to prevent, detect, and manage situations that may lead to self-infliction to themselves, to others, in a perspective with a perspective of planning and care. At the same time, we are developing content uh, actions and also uh, different courses to prevent suicide in different penitentiaries across the province to reflect on this topic and have um, highlighting prevention through different um, alternatives. In particular, the protocol includes application of uh, mental health law within the penitentiary system. The protocol and mental health law states in connection with the practice of isolation, this practice has been forbidden by the mental health uh, law for persons with a mental illness. The special rapporteur of the UN has um, mentioned this punishment of isolation and this imposition for uh, this punishment for someone suffering from mental illness is a degrading and inhuman uh, treatment. Also, we are carrying out individual psychological interviews to each of the inmates that have shown uh, or attempted um, willingness to end with their lives. We have to identify characteristics of attempts of suicide and the context in which they occurred, especially the uh, intrinsic reasons that made these persons commit these acts. We try to foster symbolization we want to be able to discuss a topic that was a taboo many years ago and to be active listeners creating a uh, space to provide the uh, correct attention after the interviews we carry out a specific actions following the current protocol in those interviews those interviews become a fundamental pillar for the prevention of suicide as they allow us to have relevant information that provide the opportunity of establishing a specific indicators for these uh, and also to define line of actions. The institution is aware of the social changes worldwide. I'm talking about how pandemic affects mental health, not only for persons deprived of liberty, but also the deterioration for persons deprived of liberty. That's why we highlight a logic of prevention and we have strengthened this approach for a suicidal behavior. We are we think that this protocol should be available, should be dynamic, should be improved over time, taking into account the experience that we gather. At the same time, and within this friendly settlement uh, agreement that it is proposed, we are available for the joint actions. Our goal is to look for comprehensive approaches to improve the issues that um, have been pointed out by the current case. Uh, is the state over with its presentation? We are still have one part with regards to a specific measure the um, Undersecretariat for Criminal Policy would like to develop. Within the framework of the measures that were implemented in the government of the province of Buenos Aires in order to provide reparations and prevent the repetition of the facts of this case, and considering the different international instruments that oblige states to establish information systems and monitoring systems for the research on um, investigation of people who are deprived from their freedom, uh, the Ministry for um, Human Rights of the province of Buenos Aires created in November the unit for the registry and monitoring of deaths in incarcer incarcerations. 
this was this is depends of the undersecretariat I'm in charge of and we are it's also under the uh, secret sub under secretariat for the fight against violence in, in uh, context of incarceration and the idea is to record and monitor deaths occurred in penitentiaries in local penitentiaries and provincial penitentiaries it also aims at systematizing and preparing reports linked to deaths in uh, jails it works with the competent areas in the ministries for human ministry for human rights and the penitentiary service in the province of buenos aires to gather the inform information to um, meet its goals which is to investigate the context of deaths it in, uh, interviews family members and the staff of the jails and also the inmates of the victims or the people who died it coordinates its work with the judiciary and other uh, organisms in the executive and also with NGOs to develop public policies to address deaths in uh, the context of incarceration. Within the framework of the measures presented to prevent deaths inside our penitentiary system and to improve the general conditions of persons deprived of their liberties, this unit will mainly focus on ensuring the investigation of the deaths in those contexts, following up on each death and the investigation that is initiated after these facts. And it deploys several measures that allow it to identify the causes, the circumstances of the fact, and all of the information that will allow us to um, assert, ascertain the uh, circumstances of the death. Apart from the uh, traditional categories, traumatic and non-traumatic categories that are usually used for deaths, this unit also considers, especially from the beginning, which allows us to improve our work, it considers other categories for analysis that provide more specific information about the death and that determine the priority order with which we will address each case and the information we will consider uh, necessary. So the categories defined by this unit are considered as A, B, and C. Category A is the top priority, and that is the category we will include suicides. Category A includes deaths in which the information is little or contradictory which, why, which is why it is necessary to um, resolve the contradiction. It also includes when there are some uh, signs that there is some sort of responsibility from the authorities, when there are signs that it was a murder, when it happened in the context of partial or general conflicts, or when there were deaths that were categorized as product of a suicide. Now, within the category B, we include those deaths that are not part of category A and in which the information that was obtained does not allow us, allow us to understand the reasons for the death. When we are talking about people who are trans, when we are talking about people without pre-existing conditions and were categorized as the, by the institution as not traumatic, and also when the cause for death is a treatable disease. Finally, category C, we include those deaths that are not part of the previous categories in which the available information explains the cause of death, which leads to the assumption that no one was responsible for it. And finally, to conclude, it is very important to point out, as Mr. Alexei said, that both the implementation of the actions developed by our registry and the scope we're giving to the program are exposed to a process of dialogue within the framework of this uh, friendly settlement process that Argentina is introducing. Thank you. I will now give the floor for the petitioner. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I, we would like to thank the 
these minutes to answer to some of the things the state said. We acknowledge as positive the fact that they intend to enter a friendly settlement process with some partial acknowledgement of its responsibility, but the um, refusal to recognize the international respons uh, responsibility for the death and torture suffered by the victim are a very complicated obstacle for the representatives and the family to consider that a process of friendly settlement could be successful. So we hope to have an opportunity to continue the dialogue with the dialogue and the state about that. The state has pointed out that the reparation was carried out with a um, civil case. As I said, it was recently solved only a few weeks ago, but these, there are some problems here. The state it, said it itself they have ordered the payment of a certain amount of money. And yes, of course, this is a case where the petitioners and the victims don't want money. They want justice. And it's not something that can be solved with a civil case. There's a serious, as the state said, there's a series of acknowledgments of the um, way Elizabeth was affected, but also a series of uh, disrespect, disrespectful phrases that say that, well, the victim, sorry, the that it will not be a high amount of money because the victim was not a productive member of society. That's not the way to reply to something like this. And this civil case that was presented by the family does not cover all the family members, all the indirect victims, or all the reparation measures one would assume are merited by a case like this. Now, with regards to the criminal matter, I would just like to say that the state continues to maintain that the only possible hypothesis is the one of suicide. And we cannot agree, we respectfully disagree with the state. The state says that there was no blood under the fingernails. Yep, there was semen in her clothes, in her body. And the state says that she, as she had left 48 hours before that, um, that's where that uh, fluid exchange took place. Elizabeth left under the custody of the state to visit her ailing mother. It was not a free visit where she could um walk around in the province she was going to visit her mother so for the state to assume that that is enough to justify the presence of semen in her body is quite odd and i think it's unacceptable for the family of the victims it's good news to know that there's now a protocol for the prevention of suicides, but there should be many protocols to prevent all kinds of violence in incarceration context. And before giving the floor to Marta, I would like to say that the fact that there are no records of their suffering, and which is expected because generally um, penitentiaries do not record the abuses, and that does not exclude uh, the responsibilities of the state. I would like to appreciate having the opportunity to express this. And now I will give the floor to Marta Mirabel. First of all, thank you for the state, for this state, the state from 2020, 2021 to accept a friendly settlement because it's not the first time we talk about Elizabeth Canelo. Several officials have known about her situation. Several governments have known about the situation of Elizabeth and never gave us a public um, answer. So we would like to promote that in order to accompany our proposal for friendly settlement, for uh, agreement, for an agreement 
because there's no access to public information. That would be the record of people who have died in the jails of the province of Buenos Aires. Also, the um, record of uh, criminal investigation and the record of uh, state agents who were reported because of their lack of compliance with the responsibilities. This is not the only case we will bring in to the commission. There should be no limitations to the functions of the Committee for the Prevention Against Torture. Some provinces are not implementing it. And the organizations should have the possibility to file the corresponding reports, especially at this international state. International standards should be met. With regards to the civil complaint, it was, this was presented in 2007 by Jessica's father, Elizabeth's former husband. Before she was arrested, the resolution was in 2008 and the resolution came out now in 2021. So as human rights defenders and family members, Apart from today's policies, we need to give answers to Elizabeth's family and all the women who are incarcerated. There should be gender perspectives and protocols to try them with gender perspectives because there are facts that have not had a response. And one more thing, we all want to uh, remember Mario Coriolano and Mario Alberto Juliano who were defenders and were there for us. Memory, truth, and justice. Never again in democracy should there be these kinds of violations. I'm sorry, I wanted to mention our colleagues who died this year. I fully understand the commission remembers Mario as well. We will now give the floor to the state. You will have six minutes so that we all have the same time. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Of course, we would like to acknowledge those defenders of human rights who are named here. First of all, we would like to point out that when the, we are mentioning the ruling that was issued is just a base for us to analyze the case. It's not that we understand that that ruling meant um, comprehensive repairs for the victims, reparations, sorry, for the victims. That is why we propose within the framework of a friendly settlement for us to address the different reparation measures, comprehensive reparation measures, a case like this one deserves, especially focusing on non-repetition measures to ensure that this kind of cases never happen again. In the second place, the analysis of the criminal investigation we did was exhaustive. It was very thorough and serious so that the Argentine state could have a coherent, um, a coherent stance with our uh, principles. That is why we confirm that we do not see any signs that would allow us to sustain a different hypothesis with regards to this case. If we did, of course, we would question that criminal investigation, but it's not the case. Of course, that does not say the Argentine state was not responsible for the uh, for a person who was under custody. We are proposing a proposal of friendly settlement because we would like to acknowledge the responsibility that recognizes the responsibility of the state on the death of Elizabeth while on custody. We are not saying the state was not responsible. We believe that the state needs to be held accountable for not having prevented that death, for not having provided the adequate services. What we do see after a serious and thorough and objective analysis of the criminal case is that there are no signs that would make us question the conclusions uh, justice arrived to. 
there are no signs for us in the reports or the suspicions of previous abuse before the death of uh, Elizabeth. We are not just saying that um, reports of tar torture should only be done or should only be filed by those who are incarcerated, but we haven't found any elements that would allow us to say that there were uh, there was abuse or torture against Elizabeth before her death. That is our analysis. And we are saying this because we uh, analyzed the criminal investigation very thoroughly. We understand that, that the uh, friendly settlement process could generate a very interesting agenda to prevent those deaths that we cannot keep on allowing in prison facilities to ensure adequate mental health services so that the deaths will have a serious investigation. We believe that this is a very ambitious agenda, but we feel that with the participation of the petitioners, with Marta's participation in this agenda, we can make the ongoing policies more comprehensive policies that can ensure this nevermore. Marta was talking about. So we are at your disposal. Our proposal is to start a process of friendly settlement with brief uh, cases. So we would like to propose to explore that process to hold a meeting in the next few weeks during July we could meet for the first time, um, give us this time to explore the possibility of an agreement. Thank you very much. Now the Inter-American Convention will ask some questions or present some comments. I'm gonna start with my colleagues so that uh, they can let me know who the comment is for. And finally, I will give you the floor so that you can reply. First of all, I would like to ask the second vice president and rapporteur for the rights of LGBTI persons. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead, president. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Piovesan. Thank you very much, Madam President and Vice President of the Inter-American Commission. I would like to greet everyone. I would like to express the Commission's solidarity to the family of Elizabeth Canelo Castaño, and I would like to recognize the state for acknowledging its responsibility for the violation of the rights and also for fostering something that's very constructive and transparent in this um, proposal for a friendly settlement. I have two questions for the state, one of them, and then one for the petitioner. My first question is for the state. I, I understand the analysis. I know the thesis that the state is proposing that after a thorough analysis, it understands that this was a suicide and not um, Um, and not something else. But there are two questions here. Number one, the state recognizes the lack of adequate services for mental health, especially the vulnerable situation Ms. Elizabeth was in because she needed psychiatric assistance and she was in unit eight, she was also isolated in very rough conditions. So my first question is the lack of those adequate services of mental health acknowledged by the state. Can that characterize a situation of torture or cruel or uh, degrading treatment towards the victim? And my second question is, in this context, this contextual framework, we're talking about someone who was suffering pain with regards to her mental health, who could not find 
answers and an adequate service is there is it possible that there's a cause between the lack of adequate mental health services and the suicide those are my two questions after seeing the investigation and what the state interpreted and for the petitioner we have here a proposal for a friendly settlement from um, 2018, but as a rapporteur for the rights of LGBTI persons, I would like to also know within the framework of non-repetition measures, what would be the proposals of the petitioner with regards to fighting discrimination and violence based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And also, you mentioned the issue of torture and the need for prevention and fighting torture. So I would like a clarification by the petitioner with regards to um, the um, warranties for non-repetition. Thank you. Commissioner Rallon, Rapporteur for Persons Deprived of Liberty. Thank you, Madam President. I want to greet my colleagues, commissioners, the petitioners and the state representatives. I have a comment and a question. The comment has to do that as Rapporteur for Persons Deprived of Liberty, and um, the private freedom and combat of torture, I took down notes of what the petitioners have posed and the state of wealth, and also in the future, the commitment to go over both parties' stance I would like to ask a question. It calls my attention. The petitioners, when they made a presentation, they mentioned that to them, it is quite clear that what happened is a violent death during democracy, that there were clear signs of sexual abuse and torture. And it seems that the description they are making differs a lot from what the state points out regarding the decision and the investigation carried out within the criminal procedure. I wanted to ask the petitioners whether they were able to analyze in depth, are there any defects, maybe are there uh, evidence that was not taken into account that differs, that causes the difference between what you have pointed out. You were very clear, but the other party also explained uh, its position. So are there uh, elements that were not analyzed, that were not taken into account because the reality portrayed is quite different. Thank you. I will now ask Commissioner Rosemena, reporter on the rights of children, if she has any comments. Good afternoon to everyone, to my colleagues as well. I want to greet you all. We are concluding a hard uh, day of work and I want to respectfully express my solidarity to Jessica for so many years she has struggled and she is now before the commission for the commission this is an acknowledgement of the credibility of our work and we are thankful for that and to everyone affected by the tragic death of Elizabeth. Marta as well with her commitment during a lifetime of, uh, of effort. 
And I also want to acknowledge the delegation of the state of Argentina who have kindly joined us today with the broad vision of the institutionality that in cases such as this one, the people, the, the states need. So the delegation of the state is an example of that. I have a question to the state. There was an investigation, auditing, internal audit in the penitentiary system to determine the conditions under which the uh, ev tragic event occurred and whether there is uh, any decisions about this. I don't know if the report provided by the state in the analysis of the decision, I'm not clear about the criminal uh, process. I, I don't know if that's the same or whether there are other investigations to determine responsibilities of the penitentiary system officers. And taking into account the explanation made by the petitioners, when they point out the fact that Elizabeth's body had semen on it, and an authority of the public ministry of the ministry of the penitentiary system, they say that the situation or that was due to her sexual orientation. So that makes me think that the issue of finding semen, if Elizabeth had that, and she had a lesbian relation with another inmate, I didn't understand that and how they ruled out that evidentiary element due to a fight that she had had with her partner within um, jail. I want to understand that. And secondly, when it comes to a friendly settlement agreement, the commission always highlights this as an important path. I call it a non-conflictive solution to try to find a solution to the case. But the investigation, taking into account what the petitioners have requested, I think that they were very clear. So I wanted to ask the state whether there is a possibility to have a conversation, meeting, so that the issue regarding the investigation as our petitioners have requested is not left aside by this proposal of friendly settlement agreement because i think there's a clear request made by the petitioners and from the state as well but if that possibility exists the commission is uh, willing to be part of these friendly settlement agreement to in order to bring them closer according to according to the conditions set forth by the petitioners I also want to add some comments as country reporter first of all I want to thank the uh, willingness of the state 
I want to request Marisol Blanchard to take down notes so that the state in 15 days can send a written proposal to start this process. First of all, secondly, I want to congratulate you for the protocol for the prevention of suicide, but I did not hear if there was a gender approach for the elaboration of the protocol, if there were differentiated um, perspectives. And regarding the specific case of Jessica, when it came to visiting her mother and the uh, assault she had suffered, do you have statistics uh, about these cases of sanctions uh, for these kind of cases? So I want to know if there had been investigations or there is data regarding these events. And as Commissioner Rallon and, and Rosemena have mentioned regarding the investigation, there are like two extreme possibilities. It's not whether it's a homicide by um, suicide, that can even be feminicide. And I wanted to ask the state, what is the information brought by the DA, for example, not only about the Convention of Belen du Pará, but uh, regarding the analysis of the evidence with the gender approach, what is the training penitentiary officers have? What is the general training? Not now, that's now, but before when the um, facts occurred. Because there was a practice, this uh, well-known behavior that has to do with gender stereotypes, the analysis of facts, evidence, and uh, determination of responsibilities. The estate said that the um, that Elizabeth left for four hours, uh, but that doesn't mean that she, the fact that she has left, um, is the reason why she had these uh, semen on her clothes. I don't. I know that in, in the minutes that are left, you cannot reply all the questions that we have asked. But I would like you to send within a month written uh, answers so that we can build upon these um, issues that are of great concern to the commission. I will now give the first to the petitioners and then to the state. Regarding the first question that Mr. Rallon asked, I wanted to let you know that this organization was made up after 2000. I was in prison for six years and I was a mediator in 1996 um, a strike. And one of the um, cases of impunity in Argentina has to do with the transfer of 11 inmates from one prison, unit three, or today's unit four of Ezeiza. I have um, claimed for the death of Kathy, Cecilia, Elizabeth, Almiron, and after this, after being in prison, I started my organization so that more no no one else die being in prison. I'm not in my computer right now, so I cannot provide a specific data. The uh, Memory Commission and other organizations such as this one that have have always fought for to prevent deaths of inmates. This organization has prevented other cases from being closed because the relatives didn't want to continue with the investigation due to the fact that they had other relatives in prison or because they were tired of waiting for a response from the state. This is not new. This has always occurred in democracy. Today, I believe in this government 
I have colleagues and friends within the government giving voice to civil society organizations because they have supported us so that the Berbisky case and uh, deaths and torture during imprisonment. The uh, protocol against torture was in 2006 and up to now there are provinces that have not implemented it. And yesterday Chaco implemented the uh, facultative protocol to prevent torture. Regarding Flavia's question, as stated, we are progressive regarding uh, human rights, identity law, equal marriage, same-sex marriage, are, um, have been milestones, Loana, Diana, all, many of them could be Could, there would be a pleasure for him to see that all this law have been passed, especially the one that was passed yesterday regarding uh, labor, but many of them are isolated in their cells and do not have access to medicine or the hormones they need. The proposal when the organization was created, we were going to have a dialogue and today we want this to happen with the memory commission and many other organizations but we still need to deal with different issues women's gender uh, sexual diversity there are no rights especially in women's prison because some organizations in Varela have this space, some prisons have this space, but many in male prisons have not this space. Many have died during democracy. I've been there for six years and I have fought for them. Today I fight for others who I know, others who I don't know. Today, Jessica is going to become a mother for the second time. Elizabeth won't be with her. Carla is part of the organization. Pablo, Eric, need have also suffered from torture. Unfortunately, they cannot reach this uh, stage because they have not the possibility of having a state as the one we have today to file the, their claim. I think I've said everything and I think you all met me and I want to thank the presence of everyone here and who know about my struggle. And today you get to know me as lawyer. Thank you. The, the floor to the state. Once again, thank you for the opportunity regarding questions asked by Flavia Comesan, there is a situation related to isolation that was characterized by judged as a inhuman treatment, a person going through such difficult situation the fact that Ms. Castaño was isolated in a cell in the province of Buenos Aires was a situation that clearly implied a scenario that fosters our proposal for a friendly settlement in order to create warnings to guarantee the non-repetition of these events. Also, the civil proceedings established that there were many irregularities that make us consider that we need to reassess the isolation practice regarding persons suffering from mental illnesses. And also in connection with the of services to prevent the dead, 
We are aware of that. That's why we're proposing an agenda to guarantee accessibility, quality of psychological aid within prisons because we detected irregularities that have to do with the services provided to Miss Elizabeth, what should have been provided and what should be the early alerts to prevent this from happening in line with what has been done in the province with the development of the protocol last year. In that sense, the state considers that the suicide protocol are important measures that can be uh, strengthened through the dialogue we are proposing. It is very important to highlight that the analysis of this case included the analysis of four files. There was a criminal case to investigate the dead, a case to in to carry out internal audits. There were no conclusive results. And the situation that was related to the prevention of the suicide, that is why we understand that is related to the criminal case. The criminal case was clear to establish the facts but what motivates us to foster the friendly settlement agreement is understanding that there were not enough analysis to determine individual responsibility in the death of um, Miss Elizabeth. We are going to uh, provide further detail in connection with this, and we will provide further information in written. We would like to make a clarification. We didn't mention this at first, and in answer to one of your questions, Marta was saying this at the beginning, clearly there is a gender perspective, both in the creation of the protocol and the registry for deaths and diversity. Both measures were based on a diagnosis that indicates that suicide as a cause is three times larger in total suicides in the case of women than in the case of men. So out of the total of women, 30% is for suicides, while in the total of deaths per, uh, for men, 9% uh, of the deaths are suicides. This can be explained in from many perspectives. Many have to do with um, problems women suffer in the in jails because they list, they receive less visits. They lose contact with their uh, children. They don't have as much access to training activities. They don't have as much access to um, rights. So working on suicide prevention. Uh, explicitly on women requires a multidimensional approach. Now, with regards to the registry, this registry has a category for trans persons who died, um, and they will always be suspicious deaths for us, regardless of the cause. So the protocol is implemented with a gender perspective that um, is based on the information we systematized and this can be explained into further detail in a written form, but we just wanted to let you know. Thank you very much. We are about, um, we are reaching the end of the hearing. As I said, whatever information you were unable to present and the answers that you were unable to provide, we would really appreciate it if you could send it to us uh, um, at least uh, a month from now. And with regards to the proposal for friendly settlements, I would like the state uh, to start this process in the next 15 days. I would like to thank you all for being here, the representatives of the state and the representatives of, um, of the petitioners. Mar Para la Comisión Interamericana, este es un espacio muy importante. Um, it, it has been wonderful to have you all here. 
And we always say that justice is like a road. You build it little by little. And this path towards justice and reparation, well, in this path, you have the support of the Inter-American Commission. Thank you so much for being here at this um, at this hearing. And I will now close this hearing. Thank you very much. Yes. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes.